Okay, hi everyone. Good morning, uh, or good evening, or good uh, afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to this workshop, Building Continuous uh, Integration and Continuous Delivery Pipeline using with AWS CDK. And my name is Petana Vandi Barus, and I'm a Senior Developer Advocate at AWS, covering for Indonesia region. And I have long-term experience uh, using AWS services, even prior to joining at AWS at 2019. And I co-founded my own startup at 2011 called Ubana.com. It, it became one of the largest real estate portal in Indonesia before it got acquired by Nantina.co from Singapore. And after this session, you can reach out to me through my social media accounts like Twitter or Telegram uh, with my handle at PetraBarus. Okay, so what's the agenda for this uh, session? So I will do an introduction on a CI CD on AWS and AWS CDK itself from uh, in the next uh, 20 to 25 minutes and then after that we are going to go into the workshop where you can do hands-on uh, lab uh, by building a CI-CD pipeline on AWS using AWS CDK. Uh, the workshop will uh, will be will last uh, for 70 minutes and then after that I'll do some closing so you can know uh, what's next uh, for you after this session. So. In this session, I, I'm hoping uh, so, so that you can understand about CI-CD and uh, you can do implementation of CI-CD pipeline using AWS CI-CD tools like AWS Code Commit, AWS Code Build, and then AWS Code Pipeline, and then AWS Code Deploy. And then um, I also hope you can model uh, CI-CD pipeline by using AWS CDK and so you can automate the building uh, of your own CI-CD pipeline for your next project. Okay, first I'm going to uh, begin with uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery and how you can achieve that by using AWS services. So typically a release process stages uh, consists of four different stages like first one is uh, source and then build and then test and then production. So in the source stage, uh, developers check in their source code, for example, Java and PHP files and, and then uh, in this process as well, the code will be submitted through peer review where developers review the code from their team members and then when it passes the uh, common guideline, it will be committed to the source repository. And then the next process is build where the, the, the code will be compiled if it's uh, compiled code like Java or, or maybe C++. And then uh, it will also run through the unit test and also uh, after that, the code will be run against the salt checker to see if uh, the code uh, within the guidelines and also in this process you can also build the container images and function deployments uh, and then you can uh, build the image and, and uh, the package itself and then after that in the test uh, phase you can do integration testing between other systems like a database or external api and then you can do you can also do load testings and then uh, ui tests and also security tests and in the lastly in the productions you will deploy the uh, deliverables to production and uh, in that phase, uh, the application will be used and be accessed by your users. And then there, you can also monitor the code uh, in production to quickly detect any errors uh, that will occur. So, uh, here's basically the definition of CI, a content integration. So, in the context, what is content integration itself? Continuous integration is the software development practice where members of a team integrate their work frequently, usually each person integrate at least daily. So this will lead to multiple integrations per day. And then next is uh, continuous delivery is making sure your software is always production ready throughout and that's life cycle. And last, continuous deployment is a, a practice where you deploy every change that passed to the automated task uh, directly to production. So the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment is in the continuous delivery, it will involve some of the uh, semi-automated uh, deployment whereas in continuous deployment you go uh, de deploy the, the deliverables straight uh, right into the production environment so there are uh, a lot of reasons why uh, organizations uh, start to adapt CI/CD principle so the first one is by using CI/CD you can accelerate the delivery of new and high quality services and then uh, you you will uh, you know reduce the lead time between uh, ideas and then when and then after the ideas goes into the production 
and then also you can reduce the impact of changing changes because uh, you will release a small changes every time uh, you release and then uh, next is by uh, doing a smaller release you can gain insight across uh, resources and applications in much easier way and the end goal is by using a CICD uh, practice you can protect and the customer uh, business um, by uh, you know like having the, the productions uh, monitored and then uh, you know uh, you can detect early uh, defect early on in the, in the process so in the modern uh, develop application development, uh, usually we already uh, implement with microservices uh, with uh, you know a lot of uh, developer teams you know, and uh, so by using by by having this developer uh, freedom to choose and to build their own uh, delivery pipeline, you know this will uh, reduce the bottleneck uh, of the developers to uh, release their own. Uh, services or application so whereas you know in the old practice all the developers uh, they share the uh, you know the same pipeline so if, if you know like in in that way uh, there will be there will be introduced a, a bottleneck where a development team have to wait for the other team to uh, deploy to productions and according to a uh, report of the state of the devops so uh, organizations that uh, you know implement uh, CI/CD pipeline. They have. They will have. Uh, they will see deployment frequencies reduced from uh, usually weekly and monthly to hourly on daily basis, and this also change the lead time. Uh, usually from like one to six months into one to uh, six days, seven days, and then this will also change the failure rate because you can uh, now detect a defect uh, early on in the process. Uh, the rate will be reduced from uh, forty-six percent. Uh, uh, or 60% to 0 to 15 percent so uh, so by by having this uh, failure rate uh, decrease you can have more your team more uh, productive because they will uh, shift their time investment from uh, fixing the, the bug fixing the defect to uh, focusing on building the right product for your customers so AWS has a lot of uh, services to help uh, on each of the stages of the pipeline starting from the source uh, we have AWS code commit and then in the build we have AWS code build and in the test we have uh, AWS code build with uh, that we combined uh, by third party services and in the deployment process we have AWS code deploy and then all of these uh, stages can be visualized by using AWS code pipeline and to get started uh, by uh, to use uh, the CI CD tools you can uh, also start it by uh, using the AWS code start Okay, now I'm going to explain uh, on this uh, particular services so you can uh, get familiar uh, when you build your own CI/CD pipeline. So first one is AWS Code Commit. So AWS Code Commit is a secure and highly scalable managed uh, source control service that hosts private Git repositories. <clears throat> so in uh, so because the AWS Code Commit is uh, you know, powered by Amazon S3, you can also get benefit of the scalability and availability and durability of Amazon S3. And then you can also have the uh, your code uh, be secured by using encryption address uh, using your own uh, keys. And there is no uh, uh, limit size for the repo. And you can also integrate uh, your uh, your process, your post commit hook by calling out into an SNS or Lambda. And next one is AWS Code Build. So Code Build is a fully managed build service in the cloud. And by using Code Build, you can compile your source code and then run unit tests and produce artifacts that are ready to deploy. So uh, the Code Build is, uh, it is uh, scales uh, continuously and you can process multiple builds concurrently. So this will, uh, you know, help you to make your build even faster because uh, you now can run uh, multiple unit tests in concurrent way. And then you you can you you only pay the build server by minute and only for the compute resources to use. And then you can also monitor the build process through CloudFlare events. So in uh, when you use AWS Code Build, uh, each build runs in a new Docker container for consistent and immut immutable environment. And uh, so you, you can also have the Docker and AWS CLI are installed in every. Uh, official code build image so you can run your docker image in the code build process and then you can also integrate or use uh, AWS services throughout the uh, build process 
And next is AWS Code Pipeline. Code Pipeline is a continuous delivery service where you can uh, model uh, and visualize and then automate the steps required to release your software. And you can quickly model and configure the different stages of a software uh, release process, starting from source and then build and then uh, test and then deploy. And and then uh, the the pipeline will be triggered uh, every time your code changes in the uh, rep repository. And uh, code pipeline is integrated with a lot of uh, third party uh, tools and AWS tools uh, such as uh, AWS uh, Code Commit, AWS uh, Code Build, and then Jenkins, and then GitHub. And last is uh, AWS Code Deploy. So AWS Code Deploy is deployment service that automates application deployments uh, to Amazon EC2 instances, or you can also use your uh, it to deploy on your on-premise instances. And also you can also use uh, Code Deploy to deploy your applications to serverless Lambda functions or Amazon ECS services. And it handles uh, the complexity of updating your applications and you can also use a couple of uh, features to uh, avoid downtime during application development and then you can uh, you know like whenever there is a uh, failure detected you can roll back the code uh, to the previous state okay that's all uh, about the ci cd and how you can build uh, what AWS services that you can use to build your ci cd pipeline now i'm going to explain to you uh, what is infrastructure as code uh, by, uh, and then like how can you model your uh, infrastructure as code by using aws code development kit so usually it starts with manual deployment where we use wiki or playbooks which sometimes are outdated. So I'm sure a lot of developer can relate to this, uh, you know, project where we have to uh, run our infrastructure by, uh, you know, like asking or reading from the wikis or playbook or ask someone uh, who's already in the team. And, uh, you know, like sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the problem is uh, sometimes this uh, wiki or playbook is outdated and then like the person, uh, you know, can go into vacation or they can leave the company. And the next thing is uh, when we build infrastructure more in more automated way, we use uh, usually bash. And uh, this usually work until the bash script is, uh, the, the, the infrastructure is too big and too complex and bash is uh, actually not really a good uh, tool for uh, complex uh, processes. And then after uh, the script, we uh, usually introduce a uh, infrastructure provision engine such as AWS uh, CloudFormation or Terraform or, or other uh, engines. So these tools will hide the complexity of state management and rollback and then drift detection and error management. And then um, so and then like many developers and uh, companies or. Uh, or they adopted this new infrastructure as a uh, code way and the adoption increased very very rapidly and usually this uh, code is uh, modeled uh, using a yaml or uh, you know uh, yaml or json or uh, some like specific different format format and and then uh, what is missing from this uh, method is uh, you cannot use a programming languages to uh, you know, model or do customization in script. So the next uh, ideas is uh, by using another abstraction, uh, using a programming languages that will generate this uh, JSON or YAML documents. So uh, from using, uh, you know, like by using these ideas, uh, there is a new tool such as AWS CDK itself, and then also other tools like Polomi where you can create a custom classes or custom abstraction to uh, generate an uh, you know infrastructure as a code. And now, what is uh, AWS CDK itself? So, AWS uh, Cloud Development Kit or CDK is an open source software uh, de development framework to model and provision your cloud application resources using familiar programming languages. So, you can do uh, this uh, modeling by using a program your familiar programming languages such as Python. JavaScript, TypeScript, or uh, Java, or, uh, and also C Sharp. And with this CDK, you will be much faster uh, building uh, infrastructure as a code uh, because you will work with your familiar uh, programming language. So if you already know uh, Python or JavaScript, you will build uh, the infrastructure, you will model the infrastructure much, much faster. And then you can also have uh, you know, familiar uh, programming language and concept uh, such as classes and method 
and then also like conditionals and you can also have all of the tools support from a uh, programming language uh, from your favorite id so for example autocomplete and then also inline documentation unit test and uh, linting style checking and debugger and the most important part of this uh, uh, framework is that you can also able your build to build your abstraction and components or main of many infrastructure or applications so you know like for example if you have like uh, you know similar components bundled together you can make an abstraction and then you can reuse, reuse the abstraction as a component or libraries so there are three main components of cdk uh, the first one is the core framework and then the aws construct library and the last one is uh, the command line interface so with the core framework, you can create and structure apps that contains one or multiple stacks that represents a cloud formation stack. So stacks are a logical unit of uh, infrastructure which contains multiple resources and map with uh, represents uh, one uh, cloud formation stack. So it's a good practice to divide uh, resources into different stack, uh, stacks that have different life cycles. For example, uh, you would create one stack for uh, network infrastructure such as VPC and then another stack will have a uh, Elastic Container Service cluster and yet another stack will be the application that runs in this cluster. And uh, the AWS Construct Library is a set of components crafted by AWS to create resources for specific services. This will help uh, you to decouple libraries and use only dependencies that you need in your project. For example, if you only need IAM, you will only uh, use the IAM uh, construct libraries. And for example, if you only need like EC2, you will need to depend on the one uh, single uh, EC2 uh, construct libraries. So it it is also built with best practice and security considerations to provide good developer experience and easy to use and also fast iteration uh, cycles. And lastly is AWS CDK CLI. It will help uh, you to interact the framework to initialize the structure and then to inspect uh, changes between deployments and then to deploy easily uh, of the uh, model to AWS. So this is an example uh, of uh, CDK code. So here we can create we create a new VPC and then a new uh, ECS cluster just by providing uh, and then application with uh, ALB application load balancer just by providing the name of the Docker image from the Docker Hub, and then the number of uh, maximal available zones of the VPC, and uh, and then like this, 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 this is just like uh, uh, you know like uh, ten uh, lines. Then these lines will generate a around like nine hundred rows of cloud formation template that will generate their own uh, VPC, subnets, uh, internet gateway, routing tables, ALB. So. By using uh, this abstraction, you can hide a lot of uh, complex resources and you can just only, uh, uh, you know, like call one uh, single abstraction. So let's see how the, 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 the development flow of CDK and how we can shift our code. So we start our project by, uh, you know, executing CDK unit. Uh, this, uh, you will uh, try, also, you will also try this in our uh, uh, handsome, lab, handsome lab after this, okay? And this uh, CDK unit will uh, generate a project structure for our specific programming language, for example, Python or TypeScript. And then after that, we can also we can start uh, creating an app and then add stacks and then our constructs or even resources. And once we are done, we have to build the project uh, itself. So, uh, you know, like if we use TypeScript, we will need to uh, use command npm run build. So it will generate the JavaScript code from uh, the TypeScript. And then we are, uh, after that, uh, we will need to synthesize our uh, code to cloud formation template and in this process we run the CDK scene. This will generate cloud formation uh, templates and then asset and we call this as a cloud we call this bundle as cloud assembly. So but before we deploy we can inspect what will change if we deploy this cloud assembly which resources will be deleted and then uh, which resources will be updated or created. And next, with CDK deploy, we push the changes to AWS Cloud Formation Services. From there, the service will create the cloud resources in our AWS account that we need. So, the AWS CDK uh, includes uh, the AWS Construct Library, which uh, contains constructs that represent AWS resources. So, 
this library in close contact that represents all the resources available on AWS. For example, there is a S3 bucket class uh, represents an Amazon S3 bucket, and then there is also a class uh, DynamoDB uh, the table class that represents a single table in Amazon DynamoDB. So while this uh, library is a starting point to create resources, one of big advantage is to have the composition of the services that represent complex infrastructure such as uh, network setup, cluster, and databases. So, and then uh, after this, we will we'll take a look on various level of construct and when to use them. So the construct are organized in uh, three different levels. Uh, first one is L1 construct that are generated from uh, the CloudFormation uh, resource specification. So this uh, construct um, are one by one, one to one mapping between classes and other resources. And L2 is the higher level service construct to represent resources such as Amazon S3 bucket or a VPC that includes other resources. So this can be a uh, composition of multiple resources, but still tied to one service. And L3, uh, L3 plus is a uh, opinionated abstraction that are created by AWS such as ECS service that includes uh, their own ILB or VPC or third parties uh, library from community or your uh, team's library. So this level, this is level where you would create your own uh, abstraction that can be reused by other team. So low level controls construct have direct access to uh, generate cloud formation elements. So this provide controls but also requires knowledge on the properties of the resource specifications. And all fields are optional and CDK will try to generate properties where they can, such as the names, and then uh, or we'll define the default uh, values. And for example, this uh, you can see uh, this EC2.CFN uh, instance will map into uh, the AWS EC2 instance cloud formation uh, uh, resource. And then L2 will generate, can generate more complex uh, risk structure. So they can contain uh, multiple resources, but they are still scoped into one specific surface, for example, uh, VPC. So uh, here you can see one uh, line of code, uh, you know, uh, new EC2.VPC. Uh, this uh, line of code will uh, generate a VPC that spans uh, two AZ and four subnet and uh, 65,000 IPs uh, split it equally between the available uh, zones. And then we can also we will also have the internet gateway routing table and everything that you need to have a fully configured uh, VPC. Okay, so uh, yeah, so if you have already uh, built your own VPC using CloudFormation, I I believe you can uh, understand like how many uh, how much time that will be saved by using this uh, kind of abstraction. Just by using one line uh, to generate VPC, you can avoid uh, writing your own. Uh, hundreds of line of uh, cloud formation. Okay, so <clears throat> so uh, CDK also uh, provide abstraction to provide uh, safe and secure permission. For example, uh, here uh, you can give uh, resources to uh, a permission to access another resources. For example, write, read, or delay. Uh, so with CDK is only just one line uh, calling a grand read or grand write on a target resources. So in this example, we have. Uh, you know, the, we, we have an uh, input bucket that will grant write uh, or read into uh, one uh, Lambda function. And then the L3 construct are composition of resources uh, across uh, different services. So in this example uh, that you have seen before, we can create an LB with corresponding security groups, task definition, and listeners. And we can also uh, create a Fargate service with IAM roles, policies, log groups, and task definition just by providing uh, two parameters. An ECS cluster that we, uh, you know, uh, where the service can be deployed. And then also the uh, name of the Docker image uh, from the public Docker repository. So this shows how powerful L3 construct can be. And you can also create your own abstraction that others in your team can uh, either publicly or privately use within your organization. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so those those are uh, the introduction to CI CD on AWS and then also um, uh, introduction to AWS CDK. Now we are going to start on our hands-on workshop. You can, you can access the workshop material here. Uh, step by step uh, on the guidance uh, you can see the link here
And in this workshop for uh, the next uh, 17 minutes, uh, you will do create your own CI CD pipeline on AWS uh, using AWS CDK. So here we will create a uh, <clears throat> we will create a uh, service on Elastic uh, Container uh, Service uh, where you know we will have an engine as service uh, shows a uh, hello world, and then uh, from there uh, we can we will you will create a code pipeline. Uh, code pipeline uh, model that will have uh, three different stages uh, for starting from source where we you can you will uh, store the code uh, using AWS code commit and then uh, next you will have a build uh, stage where you will uh, create a container image from the from the code and then it will you will push the container image to uh, the elastic container registry and in the deploy uh, you will have a code pipeline deployed directly from the elastic container uh, from to the elastic container services by pulling the the new built image from the uh, elastic container registry. Okay, now we are going to start the workshop uh, itself. I hope you already open uh, the workshop materials, and now we are going to start with uh, environment setting up environment for you to run your uh, workshop. Uh, uh, tutorials and uh, first thing uh, first step that we need you to do is to set up your uh, cloud9 integrated development environment where you will do the uh, programming of the CDK <coughs> in this uh, IDE and then after that uh, you will have to uh, set up your software and libraries in the cloud9 so we, we are going to use the, this cloud9 uh, since to make sure that you will have the same uh, environments uh, we, where I uh, created this uh, workshop tutorial. And I will give you 15 minutes to run through the uh, initial, initial, initialization process. Okay, now the, that you already initialized uh, your uh, AWS, uh, sorry, Amazon, uh, sorry, AWS Cloud9 uh, IDE, now we are going to start to the main workshop itself. And in this workshop, uh, you will try to build a CI CD pipeline on AWS using AWS CDK. And we are going to start uh, from the first step, to which is the building a new CDK applications. And then uh, you will continue to create a new code repository using code commit. And then after that, uh, you will create a new application uh, on ECS clusters. And then uh, when you finish with that, you will uh, create a new Docker image repository using ECR where you will uh, store the image to be deployed. And then the, 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 the fifth step is the creating a build pipeline using code pipeline and code build. Uh, in this, where in this uh, stage, you will create a new uh, build a new Docker image, and then where it, and then you push the new Docker image to to Amazon ECS. And in the last uh, part, the last step in the sixth step, uh, you will create a new uh, deploy stage pipeline uh, to deploy the uh, newly built uh, container image to Amazon ECS cluster. So I will have uh, around uh, 45 to 50 minutes for you to run through the steps and after that uh, please uh, wait until we uh, do the, the last uh, part of this uh, workshop
Okay, I believe you already finished the uh, main workshop. Uh, I know you uh, know uh, you already built a CI/CD pipeline on AWS using AWS CDK. I hope uh, you uh, know uh, how to build it for your own project and see uh, how you can trigger a new code modified uh, from your for your application and um, made it deployed to your uh, application on ECS cluster. Now. Uh, this is uh, also important part. We need you to clean up your resources so that you won't uh, your account won't be charged with additional uh, charge uh, for unused uh, services. And uh, in this step, we will do cleaning up uh, resources uh, that you already provisioned by using AWS CDK. Uh, the cleaning up, uh, you will need to execute AWS sorry CDK destroy to clean up all of the resources that you already provisioned. And then the last, uh, we will remove, uh, delete the, the, the current cloud 9 IDE. And if you want to uh, save your code, don't forget to download it first before you remove the IDE. So this step will take, I will give you 10 minutes to do this part. Next. Okay, uh, that's all for me. Uh, if you like to learn more about building modern applications, uh, please visit our resource hub uh, here. Uh, you can see the links here. And your modern application uh, journey starts with AWS uh, training and certifications. Uh, you can also uh, click on the links provided in the deck uh, to see about the, what kind of uh, trainings available for you to join. And thank you again for attending. Please do take some time to fill up the feedback form so we can better understand your requirements. And we look forward to engaging with you again at the next AWS uh, events. Thank you.